Okay. Today we will target to learn how to do performance testing from the scratch or from the inception of a performance test project. Here I will explain you the different types of performance testing that we do for a typical project and what kind of data points that we look at or what kind of validations that we do and what exactly needs to be highlighted to the different stakeholders of the project for fixing the performance bottlenecks. <laughs> so if you see this uh, diagram which is given at the top, the first one that we do as a part of performance testing is load testing. Load testing is basically done on the current transaction volume and concurrent users that we see in the active software application. So let's say for any given application currently per day some thousand users are logging in at any given point in time and then some, some 10,000 uh, you know, transactions are being put in. So if in a day active hours, let's say if it is a software which is being used by employees, then you can consider it as 8 hours as active hours. If it is a customer facing application, then you can take it as 24 hours as active hours. But then you can divide the load based on the day time or you can consider 24 hours as active hours where customers actively post, put their transactions. So based on those assumptions, you have to calculate the transaction per second or TPS. So let's say 10,000 transactions are being put in for 8 hours. So 10,000 divided by 8 into 60 into 60. That will give you the transaction per second. So, number of concurrent users and transactions per second on the current date is your N load, N year load. Current year is your N year load. And your N plus 3 load or N plus 5 load, which is basically load that you are expecting after 3 or 5 years as per the conditions agreed upon for performance testing. So, based on that, let's say you agree on a probation of 5% or increment of 5% year on year. On year. So, you calculate if it is 100 transactions this year, 5% more is 105 transactions next year. So, you calculate based on the same assumptions what will be the transactions will be coming into the system after 3 years or after 5 years. That will give you the n plus 5 or n plus 3 load volume. And based on that you have to do your load testing for current year as well as for n plus 3 or n plus 5 years. The second one that we are discussing is let's say stress testing. What is stress testing? Stress is basically putting more load than expected on your system to see if the software application is still behaving normally or if you see any other kind of abnormalities that you see for the system under stress. So that is basically you double the load or you kind of triple the load and you make sure your trans your application doesn't go down abnormally uh, and it is being able to serve those transactions maybe the response time goes higher these kind of things are acceptable in a stress testing but the system going down is not an acceptable criteria in stress testing Next one you see in this diagram is endurance testing. 
or soak test so as a part of endurance or soak test what usually people do is you know consider the current load and put the system in the current load for a prolonged hour like let's say 8 to 10 hours and then see if there are any memory leakages in your code or any other abnormalities you can keep monitoring your servers and during the prolonged hour you can keep continu continuously tracking your uh, servers and check if there is any abnormality that you see in the monitoring tools then there is something called spike test which usually for any of the go lives it is um, in a typical go lives it is not done but you can do it for the applications which are customer facing because during the festival seasons or during a peak period you can see a surge of transactions on a particular system so if you have something like that uh, if you have a scenario like that then for sure you have to do a spike test so what happens in a spike test if you know how performance testing is done how you know the ramp up is done uh, on the number of users how the virtual users gradually increase and then perform at a constant level for some time and then the ramp down happens then you can understand that spike is basically at any point in time you are suddenly increasing the load on the system or the number of virtual users you are suddenly uh, increasing without a gradual ramp up and you see that the performance is being performance is not impacted or the application is being able to handle such situations the next one is volume test volume test we understand the databases when your application go live happens it might be going live on some data which is migrated from some other system or you are expecting that one year down the line your database might be having so many number of transactions or such kind of volume will already be present in the database so what we do in case of volume testing is we make sure that that kind of transaction or load is all or volume is already there in the database and in top of that we start doing our performance or load testing and we see to it that because of the volume which is present in the database your response times are not impacted or whatever is your acceptable response time maybe one second 500 milliseconds or two seconds that's being adhered to now what is scalability test how best your application is being able to scale up or scale down this is mostly uh, valid in uh, cloud um, you know uh, applications which are live on cloud uh, basically you have some processes or um, criteria is set for scaling up or scaling down in case your cpu or memory utilization goes beyond 60 percent you scale up you know spawn one more ec2 instance for handling the load which is coming in or if the cpu goes below 20 percent then if you are already having two nodes switch up uh, or scale down one node that is what is tested as a part of scalability testing so i mean this is the whole thing which is tested as a part of your performance testing these are the scenarios now the second step first step is identify what all scenarios that you are going to test as a part of your performance test based on your application then the second step is read through the nfr or the non-functional requirement document to understand what kind of transactions are coming into your system and per transaction see let's say you have a functionality covering you know, 100 transactions which are going live 
for your business is you cannot consider all 100 transactions for your performance test so what you do is you have to select out the most frequently used transactions for your performance testing maybe 10 15 uh, you know 20 max and then you have to identify in your whole list of transactions what percentage of uh, you know what percentage is consumed by this particular transaction i mean let's say you have 100 transactions most frequently transaction how many transactions are happening for that let's say 50 percent of the transactions are the most frequently used transactions so you can select that for your performance testing and once that is selected let's say in the whole day you have 10,000 transactions and 5,000 transactions are coming out from a particular type of transaction so in that case you have to give 5,000 to that particular transaction per day and you know you have to make that calculation accordingly on how many how much is the TPS that you are going to test with or transaction per second you are going to test with how many users should be doing that transaction at any given point in time so in your peak hour let's say you are hitting 500 transactions and out of that 50 transactions is for in this case we do or case groups on a learning curve likewise you divide your transactions and you assign it to the correct number of users and number of transactions that are happening for R and based on that you design your workload model so in your workload model whatever in from the first, first slide whatever type of test that you have decided you design the scenarios based on those uh, you know decided types of testing which you want to do and then the last part of this slide if you see it is all about the types of monitoring that we usually do uh, and in case of cloud implementations yeah, you can switch on your cloud watch to see the CPU memory IO utilization uh, for seeing that you know there are no memory leakages and your CPU utilization is not going beyond 40 to 50 percent uh, and in case it goes up these are the points that you should highlight and then report back to your development team or uh, your architecture team java thread logs basically it tells you about what thread is running what thread is blocked if it is blocked it is blocked for how much time which other thread is blocking it if some code modification can help improving the performance there uh, so those kind of details you can get from the java thread logs you can enable the java thread logs and keep monitoring it then if you have a you know, db oracle db you can uh, have your awr report enabled or if it is any other kind of db uh, you can uh, enable your corresponding report and you can check the bottlenecks which query is taking how much time if a query is taking more time why exactly it is taking more time if it can be designed in a different way so that you get the best response best response time out of it. okay so in this slide uh, i have kind of explained more about load testing and what exactly that we do i have already uh, kind of discussed about uh, load testing in the first slide it is the same the current load for the current year uh, that we take from uh, the production servers or uh, maybe like uh, some data from the non-functional requirement document coming out of business users uh, in case they are running a campaign what kind of uh, you know notification that uh, they are going to send out uh, I mean, how many notifications that they are going to send out and what percentage of the notifications actually turn to a transaction or uh, you know converts to a transaction that percentage you can take it as current load and based on that your load testing is to be done and then you appear a new uh, what kind of increment 
that we are going to do. The second one is volume test. A volume test is same as load test for the current year, but we just see to it that the database is having the required number of volume in the uh, you know in the tables already. So uh, type of things that we note during the load test or volume test or a load n plus five or n plus three test is the response time should be less than the acceptable limit. In this case, it is two seconds and we don't see any abnormal spikes in CPU or memory utilization and the configuration parameters let's say your connection pools or you know, different type of parameters are being able to handle your load maybe a load balancer running at the back end that is being able to handle your load so um, in case it is not being able to handle, you see the error percentage, so you have to report back on the error percentage. So same things I have uh, already discussed about stress at the beginning. Um, stress is basically you are stressing out the system. Uh, so during stress test, you don't really look at the response time, uh, but you see to it that you know, your uh, system doesn't start start behaving abnormally um, and soap test predominantly check the memory leakages during a soap test during the prolonged hour you don't see any failures there uh, these kind of things can be checked in a soap test so this is a JMeter report which I have given uh, you can uh, cross check my uh, videos on JMeter script design uh, because post you know designing your workload model uh, the next step uh, is your script design uh, using JMeter or load runner or new load kind of tools so uh, you can watch my videos on JMeter I have given step by step description for designing scripts for UI as well as for the web service or microservice requests so I'll put that in the comment section below. Please refer to that. And then what kind of reports are generated by uh, Jmeter? This report is basically your summary report. There is one more which is called as aggregate report. That gives an idea about your 98th, 95th and 99th percentile. So these are the things which you should put, it in, uh, put into your report while communicating the performance out uh, or result with other stakeholders like development team or the architecture team. The last one is your uh, cloud watch graph which gives you an idea about your CPU or memory utilization during a particular period of time. So you can keep a watch on that and work with the development team to fix the performance bottlenecks and achieve the required performance benchmarks that are set. So this is all about performance testing, how do you do it. Um, probably uh, you can download the performance test result reports uh, from the internet and you can prepare a report accordingly at the end for getting it signed up. So thank you for watching. Uh, probably this will help you in doing your performance tests from the beginning. I will mention all the related links for creating the Jmeter uh, scripts and I will come up with some videos for loading the scripts preparation as well and then the aggregate reports which have to be which will help you in communicating with the other team members to explain them about what kind of performance issues that you see in the application and what are the best ways to fix it. Thanks for watching.